Our next speaker is Melanie Sclar, and she is uh, speaking from Argentina, Universidad de Buenos Aires. And uh, she is the, the last um, presenter of the series of the four accepted um, papers that had the highest score. And as a fun fact for Melanie Sign, your website is uh, an Olympiad, a math Olympiad. So that's that's kind of kind of cool. And it's an Olympic, as we'd say in South America. OK, so without further ado, um, take it away, Melanie. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Arturo, for the presentation. Uh, yeah, well, I am Melanie Sclare. Um, I'm here to present modeling human visual search, a combined Bayesian search uh, and science map approach for eye movement guidance in natural scenes. And this is joint work with Bohia, um, Vita, Soloway, and Kaminkowski, all for the university from the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. So, um, predicting eye movements for passive observation has been thoroughly studied. But when we take a task into account, then it becomes much more difficult. As we all know, um, people will fixate on different points in the image, depending if, they, if they're free viewing or if they're doing a task and which task they're doing. For example, one task may be visual search. Uh, when dealing with a task, it is important to consider not only the fixation locations, but the order of those fixations. In other words, the scan path. So it might be that two different people are focusing on the same point, but in different order. So uh, that might make one person finish before than the other one. So it's important to look at the shape of that scan path. What does it look like? So how can we model eye movements during visual search in natural images? So uh, there's been some prior work on this, may, uh, mainly Najemlik and Geisler in 2005, who have proposed an influential Bayesian model called the Ideal Bayesian Searcher, or IBS for short, uh, but it has only been tested in artificial images. So our proposal is to adapt IBS with the necessary considerations for natural images. Then the question becomes, what should we take into account when we are adapting IBS to work on natural images? So this is um, a top level schema of how IBS and our modifications work. So I'm going to walk you through, through uh, the top level um, schema of how uh, this works and all the modifications that we did. So uh, first of all, we uh, compute the template response. And the template response is quantifying the similarity between the image patch at a position and the target image giving a correct fixation position. What this means is uh, if I'm looking at uh, position i, how, uh, how similar does position j looks uh, to the target, given that, for example, I'm very far away, so I might the, the, this position might not be very visible, et cetera. So once we have this computed, we can estimate the probability of the next fixation. And for that, we'll need a prior uh, of the prior probability. We'll talk about what we did here. We can then update the posterior probability for target location, choose uh, the maximum posterior location, and of course, execute the location on to the position that uh, attains this maximum. So uh, first of all, um, let's look at the prior that we added. Previously, um, it was a, a uniform distribution because in Najemnik and Geisler's case, uh, all the positions were as likely as each other to have been fixated first. Of course, in natural images, this is not the case as it has been studied with saliency maps. So we decided to, um, to put that as a prior. We know that it predict very well uh, fixations in a free viewing task, but how would they perform on a visual search task? So uh, we selected different models uh, from the MIT to Bingen Science in Benchmark, and we tested, um, we tested how well do they predict the first fixation, the second, the third, the fourth, and so on. And we, we see here that they first uh, predict very well, but they sharply dropped afterwards. So in black, you'll see humans, and the best model that we found was deep gaze two. So that's the reason why we're going to use the deep gaze two saliency model from, from now on for all the experiments. Um, great, so we know what prior will uh, put, but I have not talked about how to compute this template response. And we also uh, modified this computation. We changed it a little bit from how um, this work from 2005 uh, was, was doing it. So just to reiterate, this is quantifying the similarity between a given position I and the target image, given that I'm looking at the position J. So if this position is very far away, visibility is low, 
and then we really are not sure of what we're seeing because it's in the peripheral vision, for example. So in IBS, this was modeled as a Gaussian. Uh, so uh, the value, uh, the value for each pair of IJs was drawn from a Gaussian distribution. This is also very good because uh, you might, if you run the model twice, you might get different scan paths, which is a, a nice um, characteristic. And the variance was one divided by the visibility to reflect this. When you um, have high visibility, you are sure of your judgment, uh, so lower variance. And when you have low visibility, uh, then you have high variance, you're not very sure. Uh, regarding the mean, they were only um, putting a positive value if the analyzed position was the target location and a negative value otherwise. So they were not looking at how similar does this position look to the target, which makes sense again in their, uh, in their context uh, with an experiment with artificial images when they don't have uh, this behavior of maybe something that looks like my keys, but it's not actually my keys. Um, and I might look and find out, oh no, they're not. So uh, for that, we uh, analyzed the uh, image patch of the position I'm considering moving to and computed the correlation between the target because we actually show people the, tar the target that they're going to search for, um, the correlation between that target and the image patch. And we weighted, uh, we weighted that value with the prior mean, the, pre the mean that IBS was, um, was already using. That's what I mean. So we are combining the two and we assign more weight to the uh, IBS mean, the original one, if the visibility is high. And if, if it's slow, we assign a higher weight to the image similarity. Great. So uh, we now have an idea of how uh, we are computing template response. But um, how do we compute the visibility map? And in prior work, again, this was uh, estimated empirically with a previous experiment. So before you came for the visual search experiment, you came for another one just to model uh, the individual differences of the retina for each individual subject. And we decided to simplify this um, by just taking a 2D Gaussian with the same parameters for every participant. Uh, this has uh, benefits, right? Because we not only not have to have an extra experiment, but also we are avoiding possible uh, leaking pa leaks of viewing patterns to the model. So just to reiterate, on top of this simplification, we also change uh, the prior from uniform to saliency map. And we also modify the computation of the template response to account for the presence of destructors. So um, to test for our model, we designed an experiment and gathered data from 57 subjects uh, searching for a target in 134 indoor images, so kitchens, um, living rooms, et cetera. And each trial will have a randomized um, number of saccades that you're allowed. So we first show you uh, the target then we um, make you fixate on a specific point, same point for everyone, and uh, without uh, subjects actually knowing, they have a limited amount of saccades. After that time, they will be asked uh, where the, the target was and their confidence. This last bit is not included uh, on today's presentation. It's part of, of larger work. Great, so with this uh, data set, uh, now we can actually compare model performances um, between CIBS and previous work and CIBS with different saliency maps. So first here, uh, I'm going to show uh, CIBS, which means stands for correlation-based IBS. So our modification of uh, including image similarity uh, with the correlation. Uh, and uh, we uh, decided specifically that we wanted to account for um, several different perspectives, several different ways of comparing our model with humans. And these are not all the metrics that we use. There are some more in the paper. But we're specifically interested in um, making sure that the scan path look human-like and not that we are just achieving the result in the same amount of fixations. Uh, the first panel, though, it is more uh, um, quantifying the proportion of targets found. So if I, if I allow the subject to only do two saccades, uh, what's the proportion of the targets that they will find? What's the percentage of the trials that they will be able to correctly solve? And uh, well, so on and so forth for all the possible maximum saccades. So the box plots are the humans and the uh, lines on top are the different models 
which are uh, CIBS, a war model with uh, deep case two saliency map, so state of the art saliency map, uh, a center bias, um, uniform prior or flat prior, and a noisy prior. So again, we are not trying to um, just find all the targets with two saccades. We are trying to make it look like humans. So um, something that goes near near to the mean of this box plot could be beneficial. So the second plot, I think uh, it's very interesting because we are now um, looking at the shapes of the scan path with a scan path dissimilarity metric. Since it's a dissimilarity, then lower is better. And this metric is based on string editing distance. So um, it is trying to analyze how similar the shape is. There is some variance between uh, humans as well. As you can see, they are in black, one humans against all the other ones. And then all the models appear. But uh, here we can already see that uh, the red and the blue one are performing better. They are, their distribution is more human-like than the uh, purple and yellow one. And on the third panel, we also use the same similarity, uh, dissimilarity metric. Sorry, uh, but we use it to compare be, uh, how this, this this similarity metric looks between humans and comparing humans to each model. So on the y-axis, uh, that um, abbreviation means scan path dissimilarity between humans, and on the x-axis is uh, scan path dissimilarity between humans and a model. So we are looking for a slope of exactly one. We are looking for to have be an identity function. So it, they are indistinguishable. So in the sense, of course, again, uh, red and blue are, are better than purple and yellow that are very far away from, from sl slope of one. But if you, took, uh, if you take an overall look at, at them, then you will be able to tell that red is better. Uh, again, we, we also have some additional metrics in the paper. Uh, we can discuss also in the post session if you're interested. Um, then, of course, we are now going to compare CIBS to other possible models, uh, to first to IBS and to some other baselines. So uh, again, it's going to be uh, with the deep case two prior because we know that's the best one uh, that we attained from before. So we are going to have CIBS, IBS, a greedy model and a saliency based model, which just means uh, looking at the most salient uh, location each time and forcing inhibition of return. So they, this is the same uh, as before. In the third panel, we can already see that um, green and pink differ a lot from, from humans. And between green and blue, which could be green in CIBS and blue IBS, they both perform very well. Um, but maybe if you, if you look at all of, of these metrics holistically, maybe I, CIBS works a little bit better, but they both uh, work uh, excellent. So to conclude this, uh, CIBS and IBS had better performance than non-planner strategies. And uh, we also showed that adding non-trivial priors resulted in more similar scan path behavior to humans. Uh, we still have uh, lots of future work, of course. For example, we made one to, um, we may want to change the template response, explore other possibilities of um, showing this, uh, this, this, this possible disturbance caused by destructors. And also uh, we want to explore individual differences for images where B modalities or multimodalities exist. Because we see that humans, they don't always perform uh, search in the same way. For example, on the image that I'm showing here on the right, we ask people to search for a cup Half of them started on the table to the left, and half of them started on the countertop to the right. And so uh, we definitely need to move towards models that can uh, account for these individual differences. So that's all I had uh, for today. 